Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden and to the last ever garden tour this year. We'll be back next year, but because it's almost November now, let's start wrapping things up at the end of the season. We haven't yet had a frost in this garden this year. We did have a night in kind of mid to late September, which went down to 0.7 degrees Celsius, which was so close, but that's well over a month back, but we haven't actually broken the zero point yet. So at the moment, we've still got all of the nasturtiums flying, for example, but also because of the warm temperature, this, these field beans here that I was growing as a green manure are getting a little bit too big and aren't gonna properly overwinter. So I'm half debating whether I just, which I've started here, to just slash them down as a cover crop and then just let them break down naturally, put over a little bit of compost a bit later on. But in terms of creating the biomass and the volume, it's great, but I will have to cut them down soon, otherwise they'll start flowering and losing a bit of the, the nitrogen fixing capabilities. The other thing that's happened in this bed is the swede are finally starting to size up for the rutabaga, but this bed hasn't had too much focus or attention this year. I've just let it go wild and it's been a real centre point, especially back over July and August. Obviously we had a drought this year and the type of crop that I felt suffered the most was the leafy greens and I think this is a prime example. The name of this variety is Ford Hook Giant Chard. To me, it doesn't look that giant. Apparently they get absolutely massive and people were saying that I should have spaced them wider. And I, I think on a normal year, I should have spaced them wider, uh, but it's kind of a, a happy coincidence that they didn't actually end up growing that big. They're creating some nice leaves finally, which is nice, but I'm gonna let this stay here all over winter and hope that we get a nice flush of green leaves before they run to seed next year. And hopefully if I start some new seed of Ford Hook Giant Chard, it's going to end up growing giant because I want some giant chard. I like this kind of jungle-like feeling here. We've got purple sprouting broccoli, leeks and the Asturian tree cabbage. I mean, I'm just going to have to harvest this to show you how big these are getting. Absolutely massive leaves that I kind of just strip off the stem like that. That can go to the chickens or the compost chop this up nicely and treat it like a cabbage. And also I'm gonna harvest the first leek of the season, which is a truly exciting moment for me because leeks are something that I've missed so, so much. And look, look at that. Not bad at all. I am very excited for leek season. It started. Just quickly wanna highlight what's growing here. This is greyhound cabbage. So it's a pointy type of cabbage, which I'm gonna treat more as a spring cabbage. If you're wanting a really easy way to look for hardy cabbage varieties to grow over winter as spring cabbages, look for the pointed cabbages, not the round cabbages. A lot of people say that vegetable gardens aren't beautiful, but I completely disagree. You can choose some amazing plants that you can eat and provide a lot of texture and color. So the amaranth, the amaranthus cretinus, there is it's stunning, absolutely stunning. There's two massive ones. The best performing ones happen to be self-sown from last year. And also this ochre, a type of oxalis, it looks a bit like wood sorrel uh, with the leaves. This is a tuber. And I've been dotting them around the raised beds this year just to add all of this amazing volume. And you can see how these are cascading off the edge, which means they're pretty suitable at growing close to the edge where you can then grow bigger plants. For example, this fennel that's flowering and also uh, this borage as well. I'm really looking forward to taking a load of these ochre tubers so over to our other garden over at Dan Ronen. It's such a stunning vegetable and it looks good and to really enjoy it as much as possible. Ochre curry in winter is delicious. One thing that hasn't worked out too well for me, which is actually in front of me here, is yakon. I'm going to blame how dry it was because they weren't late putting it in. I'm going to see what happens when it comes to harvest time, but I might have to end up getting some extra tubers next year and hopefully have a successful season because I've seen some amazing success stories with yakon. I'd like to also get involved. Whilst the Yakon for some reason has struggled, I was very surprised with how well the celery has held out considering the lack of moisture. And we all know that celery needs to contain 
a lot of moisture within the soil around it to stop it running to seed. So I've almost grown too much celery. I must admit, I didn't start these from seed myself. I ended up just buying a few from a, a local garden center, just sort of stick them in. They turned out amazingly. A lot of this celery is going to go into making bulk stocks that I'm going to then use uh, to help flavor and enhance stews and soups over winter. Just hopped over to the other side of the celery. There's a load of mangle wurzel or mangle beets. A few of them are looking pretty sizable. Excited to use those. Now, this is where we've direct sown some Spanish black winter radish, and they're just starting. They're just starting to create, uh, starting to bulb up, but I do need to come through and thin them out because sometimes when I'm direct sowing, I can get a little bit seed happy. Uh, and it's worked great as a green manure, but it's now time to go in, thin every one or two out and uh, open the space up a bit for them to continue developing the delicious roots that stay in the ground for most of the winter. I often get the question from people asking if I'm sad about it being the end of a growing season. And I'll be completely honest, I'm, I'm not exactly that sad. For me, I, I constantly get excited about the potential for the next year because a garden really is, I feel, an extension of ourselves. We grow the things that we want. We grow the things that kind of bring us joy, bring us a bit of purpose. Effectively, a garden is, is your canvas. And what I love about this time of year is the beds start clearing is that I'm getting back to that blank canvas stage and I can spend a lot of winter just dreaming and imagining how I want next year to play out. Now, sadly, winters mean sh much shorter days, but I don't mind that. I love having those long nights to think about the garden and read up on things and research things. And I also really wanna try and get back into art. It was something that I used to do loads, mainly illustration and sketching and acrylics and stuff. Now, this video is sponsored by Readly, and Readly is this amazing platform that allows you to get access to read as much as you want for, I think it's over like 5,000 magazines and also newspapers as well. So some of my local newspapers, I can read. Readly is a subscription that you just pay once a month, but you get access to all of that. And I think it's really important to mention that one account gives you five profiles. So for the price of one account, you and four of your friends or four more of your family members can enjoy using Readly as well. So on top of the normal things like Gardener's World Magazine, Kitchen Garden Magazine, Gardens Illustrated, I'm also enjoying reading Good Organic Gardening, which is a magazine over in Australia because I love as a gardener to get ideas from other places as well. And of course, there's a lot of food. Uh, there's uh, National Geographic food, BBC Good Food, in terms of getting some ideas of things that I can cook when I'm needing some inspiration on a dark, miserable day. I can use Readly to give me that inspiration. Readly also now has a vast array of podcasts to discover, including the Gardener's World podcast. So if you're needing to do some gardening, as well as looking up little tips and stuff, you can listen to the podcast yeah, as well. A quick lunch and you're growing some salads. So will you talk to us a little bit about growing salads yeah. as a beginner, especially? The first thing you need to know is know how to make salad dressings. Wow, I had no idea. One of the great things about it is that there's something for everyone. So my grandfather, he likes model railways and there's model railway magazines on Readly. If you like things like bird watching, there's bird watching magazines, quilting, all of those kind of things. And it's very environmentally friendly. I don't have to take magazines printed on paper with me. Instead, it's all in my pocket on my phone so I can access it when I'm waiting for a bus or anything like that. Using my link, readly.com forward slash Hugh Richards, allows you to access two free months of Readly, which you can cancel any time, which means if you start now, you can be using and getting all of this inspiration until after Christmas. So the link is down below and I'm sure you'll find it a wonderful way of getting lots of inspiration and information on these darker days. Here's just a quick example of what can sometimes happen to root vegetables. When they just get a little bit too much water, they split open like that. This is a turnip. However, I'm not too sad because, well, that's how it should look like. I just saw this turnip from far away and thought it was massive, but then a little bit disappointed. But at least this one is going to be nice and usable. 
A lot of you know that I'm all for heritage varieties and there's one that I'm growing here which is a Welsh variety. It's Ronda Black Runner Bean. And you just think, oh yeah, it's another Runner Bean variety. And then you actually open it up. And unlike a, a normal Runner Bean, which will have like purple and pink specks and a bit of black, this is just pure black. It's so beautiful, it's so pretty. You can use runner beans, you can soak them and, and you can cook them as well if you hold them as dry. But for me, it's been about saving the seed stock. We started with around 25 seeds. We're probably gonna get around three or 400 seeds at the end of it. So we're gonna grow a lot next year. But this is probably one of the most beautiful seeds or beans that I've ever seen. I'm a massive fan of beetroot and quite often I talk about just golden beetroot and regular beetroot on this channel but I've grown a new variety that I've never tried before and it's called albino beetroot which I'm just gonna pull this out this is well it's it's an interesting beetroot because where it grows and it sees the daylight it turns green but on the underside it's white I'm about to try it for the first time either tonight or tomorrow so I'll report back on that uh, but in terms of looking for something different to try, I have high hopes, especially when I discovered golden beetroot and how much that has changed my life. I'll look forward to sharing with you how I feel about albino beetroot, but it's something different to grow as well. Just like with the albino beetroot, I love trying new crops every year. You know when you get or you discover a seed packet and you thought, oh, I should have planted that two months ago. Example is this soy. This is called uh, Gaia soy. Um, I got the seeds from real seeds, in fact, and there are actual beans in here. I've never grown this before and I haven't really looked into it that much. I don't know how, how big the beans are supposed to grow. But they, were, they were a decent size and it worked. I reckon if I hadn't have let this Loganberry take over and maybe started them a couple of months earlier, they might have been more successful. But there seems to be a lot of beans here and I'm going to continue growing this next year and just see where it takes me. If you've just got yourself an allotment or a space to start a garden and you're spending this winter doing some planning, you might be wondering about the best raised beds material based on your climate. There's a blog post I've linked an article down below in the description that will give you kind of outline the top three choices of material depending on whatever climate you're growing in. This kale is growing nice and strongly if you look at it from a different angle, you can see the kale at the right hand side of the bed, or my right hand side, is taller, much taller than the kale on the other side. And I think it's a direct example of what happens in terms of light, because we've got the big sycamore trees. That's quite interesting. But the main thing for me in terms of the kale is, yes, I'm going to be harvesting a few leaves over winter, but I cannot wait for the kale flower shoots around April and May time. They're so, so tasty and they're such nice supplement to say purple sprouting broccoli. So I tried growing a new radish variety this year. This radish is it's called Blue Moon Radish. There we go, that's the kind of purple you're looking for. But I've been blown away how quickly these have grown, how productive they are, and I just properly tried my first one just now, nice and raw, lovely radish flavor. But if you're looking for a radish that seems to just grow really quickly, I wouldn't call this the healthiest of soil either. There's been other crops in this earlier this year, but this has just stunned me with how productive it is in a small space. So try growing Blue Moon next year. If you watched my last videos about cover crops and here we've planted around 50 cloves of garlic and then a broadcast sown some mustard over the top. This is a little bit of an experiment for me. The reason why is that the mustard I'm going to cut down in a few weeks time but I have a weird prediction where the roots of the mustard are actually going to act as a as this kind of mulch in the soil to retain moisture because roots create a nice mat and garlic is quite a strong plant that can grow through a lot of things I wonder whether those roots will act as a really effective mulch to help retain moisture, which is really important, especially come May or June, when the garlic is starting to bulb up. So let's just see what happens. That's my theory. If you've got any experience in this, let me know. So it's almost Halloween, and there's a nice looking pumpkin growing here in the asparagus bed, in fact, just utilizing some of the area. It's a very beautiful pumpkin, 
but this is just a drop in the ocean of the amount of pumpkins we've had this year if we include our other site you can see from the footage on the screen right now it's just been so abundant for pumpkins this year and so i'm going to really have to make sure that i preserve as much of them as possible and uh, enjoy them over winter i mentioned earlier in the video about the two self-sown amaranth which are just out competing everything else. These happen to self sow in the strawberry bed and just look at them. It's like, well, Charlie was saying, it's like the two towers of uh, amaranth. They're such a striking color. Really, really impressed with how beautiful these are. If you haven't grown them before, or if you're trying to like do a bit of incognito edible food gardening, this type of amaranth will, no one will bat an eyelid. This bed had a lot of things growing this season. For example, sweet peas and some field beans and some other peas, a very legumous bed. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the fact that I'm now growing leafy greens in this bed, but uh, my colleague Lucy, she just, I said, just direct sow a load of salads and see what happens. And I'm not much of a leafy green person, but there's something so nice. I've really missed Rocket this year um, because of how dry it's been, but nothing really compares to eating Rocket for me uh, in terms of thinking about the taste of a leaf. Now, another thing that we've got a lot of seeds of is Kima Durapa, which at the moment there's a couple of honeybees here. This is also known as a, a sprouting kind of turnip top. Ideally, you start to eat it before it flowers, but it's just so productive and it's a really nice flavor. If you want to like mix it into almost anything that you're cooking, like an omelette, for example, this would be absolutely ideal. And then we've got some other things around like mustards, tatsoi, lettuce, etc. But this is just, it's an instant salad bed. You just pick a load of different things, add a nice dressing, you've got a decent salad. We're also coming slightly to the end of the tomato season. As you can see, a lot of the the vines have been harvested, stripped back just to add airflow for the, the final tomatoes within here. It hasn't been the best tomato season because accidentally on one of the hot days, both of the polycrub doors were kept closed. So this turned into an oven and uh, it killed off all of the tops of the tomatoes a little bit early on in the season, which is quite funny. But, you know, you can see we're still getting uh, a decent harvest afterwards. But again, most of this has come out within a couple of weeks. I reckon we'll just turn the rest to ripen on the windowsill, maybe some green tomato chutney, and then just transplant a load of things in these beds to grow over winter, uh, which will be a lot of fun. Whilst I've stopped watering the tomatoes to help them ripen, I'm still watering this, the Fizzlis, which is uh, it's nearly two years old now, and it's just been producing so many of these beautiful, yeah, you know, Cape gooseberries. Absolutely delicious. I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of them until I started growing them, and now I'm absolutely hooked. I really hope that these will survive this winter again, another winter in the polycrub, because I was eating these all through January and February. So to have that kind of flavor, that sweetness, that, that sharpness in those kind of months, it was amazing. So. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed to see how this performs. Don't forget to make the most of Readly. Use those two free months. There's the link down below in the description. And also to watch my garden tour playlist because this is the end of all of the garden tours for 2022. So if you want to see where things started in March, all of the videos are here.